Hi everyone and welcome to the Course Correct podcast. If you're new here, my name is Amog and I'm a would-be MBA student. I'm going to be joining the Indian School of Business this year and I want to revolutionize the way we think about careers. This episode is part of a season on anchor subjects where we take a journey through a subject, explore all the possible career options and how to get there. This episode is going to be focused on literature. I'm going to be telling you why literature is so great, why you should be excited about having a literature focused career, my top 10 list of literature focused careers, a couple of unconventional things that are tailor made for literature graduates and how to get your interest in literature bubbling and how to get your passion ignited. I've included timestamps for all of these in the show notes as well as in this video so you can feel free to skip around as you feel like it. For now, let's get started. Now, literature is probably the broadest thing we will cover this season. There are a lot of different formats: books, TV shows, movies, web series, papers, the time periods are different the oral and the written traditions put together are about 4000 years of human history the types are different there is non fiction there is fiction there is satire the intent of literature has endless possibilities there are so many philosophers so many writers that have expressed so much amazing intent through the years that it is impossible to cover all of it and the same goes for impact generations of philosophers generations of writers artists have been inspired because of philosophy and because of literature there have been tectonic shifts in the culture of the country there have been huge political shifts that can solely be attributed to literature there is so much to go through it is so amazing that we are going to be talking about literature right now i cannot wait to get started so let's do just that why is literature so amazing in my opinion it's because of five reasons the first is that literature evokes feelings within us whether through entertainment or through education literature is designed to evoke feelings one of the most popular ones is happiness whether it's pg wodehouse whether it's pula deshpande whether it is r k narayanan or whether it's a movie like hangama every piece of literature that you take a look at every piece of writing is supposed to evoke an emotion and happiness is one of the most powerful emotions out there and literature does it better than anything the converse of that is sadness literature can evoke sadness like it's nobody's business think about the greatest tragedies ever written munshi premchand william shakespeare louis ame alcott or even peter weir who wrote the dead poet society it's one of my favorite tragedies and it is one of the best movies of all time in my opinion movies can make you cry books can make you cry literature makes you cry literature can also exhilarate you think about agatha christie and her mystery novels think about stephen king or sydney sheldon think about arthur conan doyle who wrote the sherlock holmes series to take a tangent think about alan moore and frank miller two of the definitive comic book heroes of our time they are not superheroes they are writers everyone loves v for vendetta everyone loves batman but do we know about alan moore do we know about frank miller we should now some writers are able to evoke laughter or sadness or exhilaration among their audiences and they are trying to do it but then there are these other writers take an example of a little girl in germany in the 1930s and 1940s and i think she wrote that book in 1942 i'm not so sure but this book is a definitive treatise of how incredibly depressing it was to be in nazi germany and no one paints a better picture than her i think it's one of the definitive pieces of literature of our time here's another reason while every other subject in the world teaches facts literature teaches truths literature teaches you about value systems literature teaches you about the fundamental building blocks of society and humanity literature teaches you what can go right and what can go wrong in the building of your character literature teaches you how to be a better person while all the other subjects just teach you about the world and the physical way in which the world works there's nothing like literature if that's what you're into let me talk about one of the most enduring pieces of literature of all time the holy bible think about it it's been around for 2000 years you know what galileo said about it 
it teaches you how to go to heaven not how the heavens go every other book teaches you facts and you need to know facts but you also need to know truths and literature is the only place you can get that reason number 3 it helps broaden the horizons of society think about it it helps you see everything from all perspectives even perspectives that you didn't think you would enjoy or appreciate or even understand a classic example is the scripted show about the unibomber on netflix why would you want to know about a serial killer why would you want to know why this person was a terrorist and an anarchist why would you ever want to know this because it's interesting because you should know what it is about because you need to know how these people think in order to be able to look for them in the future there are a zillion different reasons why you want to know about it and that's what literature does for you here's another thing that literature does it connects individuals to higher truths through storytelling there are higher truths that we need to be able to understand and assimilate and take with us through the generations but all people are not going to be able to understand them the only way that we could understand them is by having a story in which we wrap those truths think about all the vedic texts all the holy books in all the religions why do you think they've endured they are wrapped up in storytelling they are wrapped up in layers and layers and layers of thought because of which the inside stories endure the test of time that's what literature can do for you reason number 4 literature gives us a clearer view into the human condition someone once said that writing literature is an act of identity wrapped up in the practice of empathy just by peeping into the character's mind going inside it and figuring out where that character art could go by getting inside the character's mind we start learning empathy literature starts teaching us empathy by making us understand the characters better understand the logic of the characters better and understand the feelings that the character is feeling much better than we ever could and that's my segue to reason number 5 literature holds up a mirror literature holds up a mirror to us to the world and to history it teaches us who we were it teaches us who we are and it teaches us who we could be think about it like this no matter who you are there is always a writer that you feel kinship with there is always someone that describes your human condition that holds up a mirror to you now there are also people who hold up a mirror to the world think about satirists think about the daily show they expose the broken value systems that are existing in our world by holding up a mirror to the world through satire and probably the most powerful thing that i will talk about today writing and literature can literally topple power structures think about karl marx the writing of karl marx toppled the structures that were existing in russia and united it under the socialist revolution that eventually became communism think about alexander solzhenitsyn who was the exact opposite of karl marx the books that he wrote are widely considered to be one of the founding reasons why the soviet union eventually fell because he was able to accurately predict how people would feel in the soviet union and in a communist dictatorship another one is fyodor dostoevsky the writer of crime and punishment and several other best sellers and amazing books he toppled power structures within our own mind and within the psychological community by simply showing what characters could do when taken off the leash the last one is jacques derrida his work is widely recognized as the start of postmodernism and he has really toppled power structures in the universities and slowly but surely these power structures that have been toppled in the universities are also in turn toppling the power structures and the hierarchies that exist in the workplace he is very very powerful as a writer no matter whether you agree with him or not he was an incredibly powerful writer and that's what you need to know if you don't know these people i highly recommend that you see their work you understand what it is like to topple power structures simply on the back of your writing 
and on the back of how clearly and how crisply you explain thoughts and feelings to the people around you literature is awesome the next thing on the list is people who are the role models that you should have when you're trying to get literature to be a bigger part of your life these are just names that i personally feel very attracted to but you can of course come up with more names please feel free to leave it in the comments below if you think that there should be more names on the list here is my list pg woodhouse pula deshpande munshi premchand arthur conan doyle william shakespeare alan moore fyodor dostoevsky and alexander solzhenitsyn you really need to figure out who these people are If you guys want a starter please feel free to DM me I'll find a way to get some sort of a primer to you. And on to the next thing the broader meaning of literature. I mean I've kind of explained what the broader meaning is already but let's just go through it. The broader meaning of literature is to entertain, to educate, to shine a light, to express yourself and to tell a story. These are incredible things that you should want to do if you are into literature. and this is the broadest meaning of literature i can come up with the broadest meaning of literature is to create something that will outlive us all to create something timeless you will go through trials and hardships and tribulations to get through there but once you get there you will create something that will outlive us all and etch your name in the sands of time that is the broadest meaning of literature All right. Now that we've got the broader meaning down, let's talk about this day-to-day -day Zen moments. I mean, broader meaning is great and all, but what are we talking about day-to-day? -day? What are the amazing things that I could be doing day on day in order to be better and better at literature? Here are some day-to-day -day Zen moments that you might have. The first one is a thought that gives you sleepless nights. This is going to happen to you more than you might realize. This has happened to me for around two years before this podcast has finally happened. it's a fully formed thought and it will not let you sleep until you execute it absolutely perfectly okay which is not to say that i've executed this podcast even close to perfectly but i know that i had to do something and that is the thought that is going to be your day to day zen moment here's another one the first pen to paper after agonizing over it for what feels like millennia you will look at that paper and get freaked out you will look at that paper and get mesmerized and go into daydreams and never be able to put pen to it because anything you will say cannot live up to the thought that is in your head and how powerful that thought is but that one time you will get the words that you want to say which starts out that thought perfectly it was the best of times it was the worst of times that is a day to day zen moment another day to day zen moment is going to be when you are reading you will eventually find a line that evokes an inspirational feeling in you it will inspire you it will motivate you to go further along your quest here is my line this line is by robert frost two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference I like that line. I really like that line. And that that is why literature is awesome. All right, let's move on. Here is my top 10 list of what you can do if you are a literature grad. Now disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. This list is indicative. Do your own research, understand more. If you think I've missed out something, put it down in the comments. I'm happy to address it. But I think this list will get you started. Number one, a writer or an author. Now, of course, this is the dream. This is the most obvious one out there. You could be a writer of books that gets on the New York Times bestseller list. You could be one of the people who sells books for a living, understands the value of thoughts, and clearly expresses it to people so much so that they can't wait to read your books. You tell the best stories out there, or you give the best advice out there, or you could do. something that you are amazing at and you could write a book and that would be amazing but there's a little more to it you could also be a comic book writer 
you could also be a columnist in the times of india you could also work for tv you could also write movies you could also write tv shows you could write web series the list is endless even this youtube video i have had to write it you could be one of the people who writes youtube videos for big youtube channels it's a big world out there get researching what do you want to write number 2 and here's a slight twist on it you could also be a screenwriter now writers are a little bit different than screenwriters in the sense that writers write stories screenwriters script dialogue right you could be working for movies working for tv shows working for web series writing the best dialogues out there think about it some of the most iconic dialogues you've ever heard what if you could write one of those कभी कभी लगता है कि अपुन ही भगवान है जिंदगी और मौत ऊपर वाले के हाथ है जहां पर आप उसे ना तो आप बदल सकते हैं ना मैं हम सब तो रंगमंच की कटपुतनिया है जिनकी डोर ऊपर वाले की उंगलियों में बंधी है कब कौन कैसे उठेगा ये कोई नहीं बता सकता है टीम दैट मेक्स दो Think of the best ad campaigns that you've ever seen. You could be a part of drafting those ads that are so popular that they are now a part of our pop culture. They are no longer even selling a product anymore. They're just a part of our culture now. You could be a copywriter for TV, for web series, for podcasts. You could work for an ad agency simply on the basis of how well you can communicate thoughts and feelings to your viewers or your listeners. do 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 the wonderful piece of they had rose a glass of food. washing powder nirma wonderful washing powder nirma wonderful la 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 luleo la 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 leo la 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 number 4 working in marketing now this is a little different from what i mentioned earlier about copywriting copywriters work for ad agencies the person who works in marketing gives briefs to those ad agencies about how to make their ad campaigns the marketing in charge for a big multinational corporation is hell bent on making sure that their brand identity stays sacrosanct now think of a brand like detol detol is just cleaning your floors or cleaning your hands or making sure that you have a cleaner house around you that's it but the brand is so powerful and so stuck in your head that i don't even know how many of you would know the competitor of detol i mean of course you would know the competitor of detol but how much bigger in that mind space is detol in your head let me tell you how big it is what company owns the brand detol how many of you guys know that that's how big that brand is that is what a person who works in marketing does brand management and someone who works in literature can be really good at that number 5 you could be a journalist i mean yeah you like the languages and you like literature but maybe you want to ground yourself in something real something that's actually happening in the world the idea of being a part of the press is a very noble experience and a very noble enterprise you should want to be a journalist you can cover the news travel the world understand cultures and power hierarchies and political differences and you could travel the world and discover everything simply on the back of the fact that you're a good writer and you are able to understand thoughts and clearly express them to your viewers 
Number six, a digital marketer or a social media manager. Now, have you guys seen the Netflix Twitter account? It's called Netflix is a joke. Have you guys seen this Insta account or this Twitter account? I think which is called Mad Over Marketing. Have you guys seen the Swiggy Insta account? There isn't a day when I don't marvel at the amazing things that they put out. It's incredible the things that they can do simply in that small space of your phone. They are amazing at it. In the world of the internet, the digital marketers are at the forefront of getting brands to people. They can execute brand strategies like no one else. All of the companies that I just listed out. Do you think their owners sit down and actually make all of these things? Make these ad campaigns on digital marketing platforms? No. There's a team. There's a guy whose job it is to post on Insta, post on Twitter, and the level of creativity that they show is astounding. And you should want to do that. It's digital marketing. Look it up. Number 7. Start a publishing business. Now there's two types of people who are great at literature. One of them are great writers. But what if you're not a great writer but you're a great reader? What if you know great literature immediately? How about if you are able to separate the good literature from the fluff like nobody else can? Maybe you should start a publishing business. Maybe you should work for a publisher. Maybe you should start working for Penguin Books. Maybe you should start understanding more about the publishing business itself. Who knows? Maybe one day you could have your own Penguin Books or maybe you could figure out a way to have a micro publishing business. There are many possibilities out there and you should really start researching into them. Number 8, an interpreter or a translator for the UN. Now what if you guys are not great writers or great readers but just have a flair for languages? Those people exist too, right? Just have a flair for languages. You give those people a book on French and within 6 months they are just fluent in French. They are just people who understand and learn languages very very quickly. You could be one of those people. You could be an interpreter or you could be a translator for the UN and make sure that you're in the room when the world's most important decisions are being made. You could contribute to the cause of making the world a better place by your specific way and use your talents to do it. Think about it. It could be really great. Number 9, and this is my personal favorite, start a library cafe. Now this is a slightly out there one but i think there's a lot of value to it in a world where people are just trying to get to know each other try to understand each other a meeting spot is everything you have your coffee shops out there you have your pubs you have your libraries you have the crosswords of the world as well and there are many other places for people to meet but what if you just want to chill with a book and a glass of wine what if you want to chill with a book and a cup of coffee is there a place for you out there there's some places where these exist but maybe there's a need for more there's definitely a need for more in my opinion maybe you could start one of these things look it up it won't be that hard to get started but it's a lot of work it's a new business and you will have to give it your all it's an amazing opportunity for you to be a part of a community of people who are just readers if there's a library cafe you could have a poetry slam night a stand up night you could have places where people could come together and discuss so many things together in your cafe and you could be a part of that discussion it's a great idea look into it number 10 be a teacher now in my opinion This is probably the most important thing you could do with a literature degree. A literature degree is about conveying thoughts and conveying feelings. A literature degree teaches you how to think. It teaches you how to feel. The most important thing you could do with that is to impart that education to the next generation. A generation of people who think better, who feel better, who understands themselves history and the world better it's an incredible thing that you could do with your literature degree you could be a researcher you could be a professor in college 
you could be a high school teacher or a junior college teacher of languages work in educating the next generation of people to make the world a better place with your literature degree it's an incredible job opportunity and you should really go after it if you're the right fit for it think about it so now we've gone through my top 10 list here's one unusual career that i found corporate communications now you can be a part of a small organization you could be a part of marketing you could be a part of ad sales you could be a part of a million different things just by having a literature degree of course you could be a writer or an author or a journalist but you could also be a part of corporate communications every company no matter how big or how small always has a corporate communication arm and a pr arm that is attached to it maybe you could get in there talk about the vision the mission of the company understand and get below the basis of what that company is all about and communicate to the masses communicate to its shareholders communicate to its investors how the company is doing how the company will do better and how the company is going to flourish in the future and be a part of that company's success story i'm going to link one example below about how a liberal arts degree is exactly what people are looking for in corporate communications take a look so let's say you like literature and you've done a great job in trying to figure out that you like literature now how can you get inspired here's what you can get started with start a portfolio whether it is a blog whether it's a youtube channel or an insta account or a twitter account or a blog or even a tiktok account i don't care start a portfolio start expressing yourself start trying to tell stories understanding yourself better is only achieved by expressing yourself more and the best way to express yourself is by starting and keeping your portfolio growing start now here's another one read as much as you can i've put three or four links in the description below get reading get started if you don't want to read you can always listen go on audible check out the audiobooks there are a lot of audiobooks out there that are cheaper than the books themselves i personally listen way better than i read and i always go to audiobooks because you can read them while you travel you can read them when you have free time you can read the audiobook while you're doing other things and i like that maybe you could check it out oh yeah and tell them i sent you maybe they could sponsor and that's it that's about literature i'm going to see you guys in the next episode and i'm going to leave you with what i think is the best description of literature i have ever seen in my life and here it is no matter what anybody tells you words and ideas can change the world now see that look at mr pitt's eye like 19th century literature has nothing to do with going to business school or medical school right maybe mr hopkins you may agree with them thinking yes We should simply study our Mr. Pritchard and learn our rhyme and meter and go quietly about the business of achieving other ambitions. I have a little secret for you. Huddle up. Huddle up. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. and the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, "O me, O life of the questions of these recurring of the endless trains of the faithless of cities filled with the foolish what good amid these oh me oh life answer that you are here that life exists and identity that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse What will your verse be? Brain damage. <laughs>